Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 12 of What If Naruto Was the Reincarnation of Barg and Lysandrin. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 13 of it, comment down below and let me know. The let goal for this video is 200 likes. So like this video to let me know that you're interested in this series and you want the next part. Check out my new videos of My Hero Academia What Ifs in my second channel and give it some love as well. Link is in the description. I have created a playlist for this what if where you can find all the previous parts. Link is in the description. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Uzumaki Naruto vs Inuzuka Kiba. Finally. It's my turn. Time to show that piece of trash what a true alpha can do, stated Kiba in excitement before rushing down to the arena. The dog thinks otherwise, remarked Naruto, who used Sunido to get Tihiri in the floor, and saw Kiba looking up to see Akamaru was too afraid to come down. What? Akamaru, get your butt down here, commanded Kiba, but the dog refused, and was shaking in fear of Naruto. The dog knows when stay, and not cross paths with death incarnate. You should praise him for his sensibility and brains. Something you lack, replied Naruto with Kiba now snarling at him. Shut your trap. At least I'm not from a family of undead freaks like you and your parents over there, exclaimed Kiba while pointing at Naruto's parents. No? You Kiba come from an honorable clan, that believes in loyalty and companionship with those around them, replied Naruto calmly. He's complimenting Kiba. Thought everyone in surprise. That's right. I am from a great and honorable clan, boasted Kiba while puffing out his chest. Then given your attitude, it's clear you were adopted, added Naruto with a cruel smirk on his face. Is the witty insulting nature we Uzumaki are known for when pissing people off, thought Kashina with a smirk of her own, and almost everyone was laughing at Kiba. What did you say? I'll kill you for that, exclaimed Kiba while getting a fear look on his face. Better men and people lower than trash have tried full. Since I'm still standing, I'm sure even you can comprehend that each one failed, remarked Naruto while he stared at the angry looking Inuzuka impassively. Start the match. I want to make this asshole regret ever insulting me and marrying my sister in the future. Not to mention his impending marriage to Hinata when she's older. The only one who is going to marry that bitch when she's ready to have children is me. Exclaimed Kiba while Naruto narrowed his eyes at him. Naruto had been increasingly impressed with Hinata since before the Chunin exams started and visited the young Hyuga since coming back from Wave Country. The girl had been happy to see him back while letting him know of her progress as Sanade's new apprentice. Hinata showed that her potential to heal others through her medical skills was nearly boundless and would one day surpass even Sanade at the rate she was going. The only one who was having a problem with it was Kiba, who was upset she was not on his Genin team, but also getting married to Naruto in a few years, and made that face known to anybody willing to listen. Naruto had ignored it for the most part out of respect for Hana, since he was her little brother, and didn't want to ruin their growing relationship. The same could be said for Tsume too since she was the stupid boy's mother, and it could cause a rift or possible resentment between their clans, unless the woman herself were to sign the order to exile Kiba. Of course, Tsume couldn't risk doing that without a possible clan heir to succeed her should she need one to take her place as clan head, and with Hana eventually marrying into Naruto's clan Kiba's value was just high enough to spare him that life. For now, fight commanded Hayate before Kiba moved brashly in an attempt to claw Naruto's face off or at least scar his enemy badly enough that the sight of him would make Hinata cringe. Naruto easily dodged the attacks Kiba executed at him with ease, as they were sloppy, predictable, and slow in his eyes. Kiba himself was filled with rage, his eyes burning with fury over everything that had happened in his life, and blamed it on Naruto. In his eyes, Naruto had taken everything from him, and wasn't the least bit sorry for it. In Kiba's eyes, Naruto took away the Inizuka's sister, his future bitch of a wife he saw in Hinata, and made him look like a complete fool in the eyes of others. Kiba intended to change that in this fight. Or at least he tried to change things in his favor with this fight. Kiba was outclassed in every single way beyond measure. Naruto didn't even change his cane into a battle axe, and simply tripped the Inizuka during one of his charges. When Kiba got off the ground, and turned to face his opponent, Naruto had smacked him with the end of his cane with enough force to send the boy flying into the wall. Some of the competitors, who didn't know Naruto, or how strong he really was since they never met him before today, had white-eyed looks on their faces. Kakashi couldn't believe his student was getting the snot beat out of him by Naruto and saw said boy walking calmly toward Kiba without a care in the world. Had enough in Yuzuka, asked Naruto with Kiba glaring up at him and rushed forward. Only to be backhanded right into the wall once more. Why? Why would you just roll over and die? Asked Kiba while struggling to get up. I have died. Many times actually, replied Naruto with Kiba looking at him strangely. What the hell are you talking about? Asked Kiba with Naruto glaring at him. Use that brain of yours full. Think about it. Every beating, the abuse the village brought down on me when I was growing up, and on my birthdays. 
Did you honestly think none of them were life-threatening? That I didn't die at least once, and was brought back to life, just so the fools could do it all over again? Even the Uzumaki bloodline I possess, which allows me to take such punishment to the body, can only take so much. The truth is Kiba, that without the fox during those years growing up, I wouldn't have lived to see my 10th birthday. And even if I did live without the fox to heal me, the people of Konoha would have made sure I suffered every single second of that day before death took me on their terms, applied Naruto with Minato and Kashina scowling while glancing at Kakashi currently sweating under their gaze. So what? You are a freak. A monster with or without the fox in you. The Uzumaki clan is or was filled with a bunch of freaks. That's what dad said when growing up. He told me your clan got wiped out, and the world was better off for it, replied Kiba with Naruto's eyes narrowing. And how is the world better off without my clan, Kiba? Tell me. Does the world seem more stable? More refined? Happier? The answer is no. The world has spun into chaos. Disorder. The Jinchuriki of the world are hated. Shunned. Oppressed. They are treated like monsters by the very people who make them. Power-hungry hypocrites who don't know when to stop hunting for more of it. You are such a person in the making, replied Naruto, which made Kiba angrier. What? How dare you insult me? I'm an Inuzuka, explained Kiba while Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. And a pathetic one at that. You talk of how your clan embraces loyalty and friendship, but you would sooner kill me to get to a girl who doesn't even like you in the way you want. Your attacks while unrefined and lacking the necessary means to hurt me, were no less aimed with the desire to cripple or kill me in this match. Given your feral rage, your attitude, and overall name calling, you wanted to achieve the latter. Not the former, said Naruto with Kiba spitting out blood. So what if I was trying to kill you? You're not worthy of loyalty or friendship. Or my sister is your future wife for that matter. You're not even human. I can smell it. Same as with your parents. The three of you smell of death. Of decay. You are nothing more than walking corpses. Explained Kiba with Naruto letting out a boisterous laugh. That's a new one. Walking corpses. Ha. I've met with your sister countless times, I've told her to be honest with me, and I sense she always has been honest with me. Do you really think your sister would tolerate me, or my family, if we all smelled like walking corpses? Naruto challenged with Kiba snarling. Her nose is defective, stated Kiba with Naruto scoffing. I highly doubt it. In any case, you are beaten, bloodied, and are on your last bit of energy at the moment before blacking out. Save what little dignity you have left and embrace it, replied Naruto with Kiba glaring harder, while ignoring the signs of his body wishing to just yield to the iron car. Never. I'll kill you even if it's the last thing I do. Exclaimed Kiba, as he rushed forward one final time, and aimed his clawed hand at Naruto's throat. Only for Naruto to vanish via Sunido to the left of Kiba, and was struck hard in the head by end of the cane, that was a few levels in strength short of snapping the Inuzuka's neck. At the very least, Naruto gave the boy a mean concussion, and was hoping to put the fool in a coma from which there was no escape. Naruto could only hope he would be so fortunate. Heal and play dead dog boy, remarked Naruto before walking away to the steps, while Hayate called the match in his favor, before the next random pair of names appeared on the board. Karami Ikumo vs Hyuganeji. That made Naruto stop walking and glance at the two competitors. Ikumo was nervous and rightfully so given her taijutsu was average at best. It needed to be refined better, before using it properly in the field. As for Neji, he was smoking at the future victory, that was indeed his on this day, and planned to end this match with brutal efficiency. Ikumo's strength light in Genjutsu, which Neji knew would take time to make, and wield against him. Neji wouldn't give her the needed time to use even one of them, before crushing the girl with his gentle fist. This match is not in your favor Ikumo-san. There is no shame in forfeiting this match, when you have come so far already, said Shino with Ikumo looking worried. Sadly, I agree with Shino. You have come far on your first try for this Ikumo. More so than anyone else in your situation could have hoped to achieve. The good Chunin knows when to flee from a stronger enemy and live to fight another day, when the odds are your favor, added Naruto, as he saw the sadistic gleam in Eiji's eyes, and knew the fool was itching to get at Yukumo to get to him, because he couldn't get to Hinata. I know, it's just, said Yukumo with Naruto nodding in understanding. Your determination and pride is saying to fight. I know what you mean, but in this case, the opponent is not going to give you a chance to fight back, and you are sadly not near his level in terms of taijutsu, to hold him off long enough in that field to create one yukinjutsu to put him down. The boy has a grudge against me too. Misguided, but one he will use to hurt you, just to get to me, finished Naruto with Ikumo understanding and knowing what to do. Proctor, I respectfully forfeit due to my skills not being at the level needed to fight my opponent properly, stated Ikumo with Hayate nodding in understanding. Damn it. I got the victory, but not in the way I wanted. Damn that Namikaze, thought Neji furiously, while glaring at Naruto for denying him the sweet taste of the victory he desired. It was clear what Neji was thinking when Yukumo saw his angry face, and was even more grateful to her teammates for suggesting she not fight the Hyuga. 
She knew the Hyuga prodigy was stronger than her, faster than her, and now knew he had a reason to hurt her in the match she just forfeited. Had Takumo competed, she would have either been badly injured, crippled, or killed by the Hyuga boy, while said Hyuga had a smile on his face the entire time. She may have lost the preliminary match, but kept her life and future as a shinobi in the process. A fair exchange in her mind if there was any. You did well for your first time getting here Yukumo. Never forget that. You have just recently been put into active duty again, and went through a gauntlet when training with Anko in such a short time. Not many people your age, or even those older than us can say they have done that, stated Naruto with Yukumo nodding and smiling. I know. There is always next time, replied Yukumo with Naruto nodding. Agreed. There is also the chance that you will be promoted if enough missions are done to qualify for it. It has happened before in the past so advancing through the Chunin exams is not the only way to continue your shinobi career, added Shino since the exams were just a civilized way for shinobi villages to promote their genin and provide healthy competition. Enough with your feel-good garbage. Weaklings should not be praised for being weak. If they can't compete against a stronger opponent, then they should quit being a shinobi and live out their lives being weak, said Sasuke with his arrogance stinking up the room and making Naruto want to gag. Silence your forked tongue Uchiha. It is bad enough I have to be in the same room as you and hear your foul words that make me want to rip off my own ears to shut you out, replied Naruto in a tone that told the Uchiha that one more word from him would be a big mistake. Why don't you do everyone here a favor and just kill yourself? It would save us all the trouble of being near you. Not to mention, being near the freak of the week, added the screechy voice of Sakura with Naruto glancing at her with hardened eyes. Do not speak to me again Haruno or I will end your life. You have no room to talk given how you chickened out of a mission and hired another shinobi to take your place under your horrible likeness. I have seen the true Haruno Sakura, and what I have seen is nothing but weakness. You are only here because the Chiha needed one more teammate to participate in the Chunin exams. You are cannon fodder. Nothing more, remarked Naruto in a cold icy tone, while Sakura looked livid. You dare insult me. I'll show you, exclaimed Sakura, as she moved to perform a jutsu, but was stopped when chains appeared underneath her, and wrapped around the girl's body. You have two choices girl. Choice 1, I let you go, and you participate in your match. Choice 2, I kill you right here, right now, and no one, but your parents will mourn you, replied Kashina, as she was in a position to have her chains for pride through the girl. And spray the bodily remains everywhere. Kashina please. My student may have been acting bit rash, but, pleaded Kakashi, but the woman just glared at him, and made the jonin shut up. Rash. She was going to attack my son. I know he can handle himself, but I wouldn't allow such a thing to happen, if I can prevent it. Unlike you. Kashina replied coldly. Agreed. Sakura's actions here have gotten her disqualified from competing here today and ironically enough, right when she's supposed to fight, said Sanade, as she pointed to the screen, and showed Sakura was meant to fight her old academy rival Ino. What? No. I want to compete, exclaimed Sakura while trying desperately to get free from the chains that bound her. Let her compete. It will be all the sweeter to see the fangirl fall at the hands of her rival, and a real leaf Kanoichi of Kanoha, said Naruto, as he knew Ino was taking her training seriously now, and explained to the girl how dieting was unhealthy for her, when training could easily burn the unnecessary fat away. Ino had taken his words to heart and sure enough, the silent urge to diet had left when they went out on their dates, and she ate more often. Ino had focused on exercising and keeping her still growing figure in shape, so any fat she gained could be turned into much needed muscle should she get into a fight with an enemy shinobi that wouldn't expect a girl to have it. You sure Naruto? asked Sanade with Naruto nodding. Yes godmother. I am sure. If anything, the sight of Sakura failing should be somewhat entertaining, replied Naruto with a smirk and saw Sakura was pissed off while Kashina released the girl from the chains. I'll show you, replied Sakura, as she went down to the arena floor and glared at Ino now with all her anger. As she couldn't hurt Naruto directly, Sakura would aim her sights at Ino and humiliate the platinum blonde haired girl right in front of her future husband. Ready? Fight, said Haite with the girls getting ready to do battle. Prepare to meet your end pig, exclaimed Sakura as she charged forward with her fist cocked back and prepared to hit Ino with it. Seriously? She's charging forward. Did she throw away all the training we went through just to graduate, thought Ino as she dodged Sakura's attacks with ease. So reckless. So sloppy. So impulsive. It's pathetic really when you think about it. Sakura actually thinks her reckless and angry way of fighting will give her the win. What is this? A schoolyard fight. Thought Naruto, as he watched how Sakura was trying to land one of her punches on Ino's face. But that was all she was using, and it was kind of sad to see someone with ninja training now fighting like a brawler with no sense of coordination. And he thought Kiba was bad when fighting. What did Sakura do? Take lessons from the mud. Ino seeing her chance from one of Sakura's missing strikes, moved forward suddenly, and kneed the pink-haired girl right in the stomach. 
Stumbling back, Sakura was unable to block the second strike with Ino's other leg, followed by some well-placed punches to the face, and finished it off with a nice jumping spin kick. Unlike Sakura, who had let her skills diminish since graduating, Ino had been flourishing like the flowers she loved to tend to at her flower shop, and was showing she was indeed worthy of being called a Kanoichi. After Sakura fell down face first onto the ground, Ino it would have been more merciful for Ino to kill Sakura. Now the Banshee will have to live with the shame of it all, remarked Kashina with Naruto smirking. I think that was the idea mom, replied Naruto, but soon frowned when Sakura got off the ground, and moved to strike Ino in the back with the kunai. Only for Ino to sense a coming in dodge at the last moment before grabbing the limb in a firm grip while glaring at Sakura. The pink haired girl could only do the same, but she was powerless to do anything due to her overextended reach, and open to being hit by Ino's knee. Ino didn't stop though, as she brought the arm with the kunai in hand behind Sakura's back, and put an arm around the pink haired girl's neck, while putting pressure on the arm, so the kunai would drop to the ground. That was low even for you Sakura. Stabbing a fellow leaf kanoichi in the back, stated Ino with Sakura snarling. You have no right to judge me. I'm not the one who has to marry that freak up there in a few years with the other sluts chosen to be with him, countered Sakura with Naruto and the others frowning when they heard this. You wouldn't be saying that if they were marrying Sasuke. Besides, you want to talk about sluts, when I know for a fact you tried to have your way with Sasuke's in the forest of death, but failed when he woke up at the last possible moment, and threw you off of him, countered Ino with Sakura freezing at being caught, while everyone was shocked the girl was that desperate to be with Ichiha. How do you know that? demanded Sakura with Ino smirking. I didn't know. You just told me. I honestly thought you would try it, while in the forest of death when given the opportunity, I knew Sasuke would react accordingly. It's easy to make accusations, and be accurate most of the time, when knowing how to read people like you Sakura and the Ichiha. Only you would be so desperate to try getting into the Ichiha's pants, and only Sasuke would reject your sexual advancements, answered Ino with Sakura looking livid at being tricked into confessing what she did. Bitch, exclaimed Sakura before she felt her wrenched arm being pressed harder at an increasingly unnatural angle. Says the girl who tried to spread her legs to a boy who doesn't like her in a forest filled with enemy shinobi, countered Ino before kicking Sakura away from her. I'll kill you, exclaimed Sakura, but was soon restrained by several onbu, and left in a poof of smoke. Your ability to teach clearly shows Kakashi, remarked Naruto with Kakashi narrowing his eyes at him. Oh really? Ino-san didn't exactly treat Sakura with respect Naruto. What does that say about your future wife? Challenged Kakashi with Naruto smirking. Considering Sakura was a fangirl of a bitch from the start. I think it means my future wife has a better future in being a shinobi than your student does, replied Naruto with the jonin near him looking increasingly angry. Your lucky Minato sense is your father, or else I would punish you for that insult, said Kakashi with Naruto scoffing at the threat. Like you haven't already tried in the past, and hurting me before that tidbit of information was made known to the public, countered Naruto with Kakashi shutting up since it was true. Sakura will be in prison for good this time for her actions and she will not be getting out for any reason, ordered Tsunade with Kakashi silently cursing his luck. The Chunin exams were pretty straightforward from there on out, as Gaara advanced after defeating Lee in a well-earned fight, and Tamari beating Tenten by using her fan to unleash a powerful flesh, cutting wind jutsu on the leaf Kanoichi. Tamari had considered hurting Tenten further, by letting the bun-haired girl land on her weapon, but a glance at Naruto watching her actions, made the Suna Kanoichi nervous, and decided to be merciful by catching the falling girl with her arms. Those who successfully defeated Choji, but not without using some considerable effort on his part, and Shikamaru was able to defeat Kin using his shadow possession jutsu. Alright. Now that you've been dwindled down a bit, it's time to find out who will fight who in the Chunin exam finals being held one month from now, said Anko, as she had each contestant take a piece of paper out of the box she was holding, and read the number they were given. I got two, said Eiji calmly. I've got three, replied Dosu. I have seven, said Shikamaru. Eight, was all Tamari would say. Four, replied Gar. I'm number one, replied Naruto with a smirk. I have five, said Sasuke with his usual scowl on his face. I have six, replied Ino while seeing Shikamaru wanting to smack his hand against his forehead, and muttering troublesome under his breath. I have nine, said Shino. I've got ten, replied Konkuro simply. The names of each person, was put on a chart matching up to their number, and it made some people nervous. Bound one, Nemikaze Naruto vs Hyuga Neji. Bound two, Dosu vs Sabaku Nogar. Bound three, Ichiha Sasuke vs Yamanaka Ino. Bound four, Nara Shikamaru vs Sabaku no Tamari. Bound 5, Aburame Shino vs Sabaku no Konkuro. You all have your signed matches. Train hard for you will be facing this person, and those following should you advance one month from now. Good luck. Some of you are going to need it, replied Tsunade, as she left with the Anbu, and let the Jonin senseis meet with their students. You kicked a lot of assy too. I'm proud, replied Anko while praising Shino and Naruto for their victories. 
We didn't wish to damage your reputation, said Naruto with a smirk, while Anko just smirked back. Naturally, Anko crept back. I hope I didn't dishonor you with forfeiting Anko-sensei, replied Yakumo with a sense of worry in her voice. Nonsense. I know Chunin who would have collapsed and peed themselves at the idea of facing a Hyuga if they were in your position. Given how you had little time to train and prepare even with me pushing you so hard, forfeiting the match was the smart thing to do. You did the right thing Gaki, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Not the Ichiha and certainly not the Hyuga bastard you were assigned to fight. There will be times, when you are on a mission, and an enemy stronger than you will be your possible opponent. Knowing when to retreat, and when to fight is key to being a Chunin. Fighting Neji would have put your health at risk, and you would have gained nothing from it. The next time around, I'll have you ready for whatever gets thrown your way, replied Anko with a smile on her face. You shouldn't get her hopes up Anko. Next time around, she won't have Naruto, and Shino to protect her, remarked Kakashi while reading his book. She didn't need to be protected from us Hadake. After I killed Orochimaru in the forest of death, I found my teammates fighting off Iwa Genin, and saw they were doing very well. Yukumo especially, replied Naruto while a deafening silence filled the room. You killed Orochimaru. Orochimaru of the Sonin, demanded Kakashi with Naruto nodding. The fool bit off more than he could chew, and considering his choice in a dental plan it's quite a mouth Orochimaru's got. Shame his attempt to give me a cursed seal, to force me into submission, came back to bite him for change. An ironic one at that, said Naruto with Kakashi looking horrified at the news. This is bad. Sandarime Sama promised Sasuke's body to Orochimaru in exchange, that the planned invasion wouldn't damage Kanoha too much. The Sanin was the only person capable of training Sasuke to his full potential to one day kill Itachi, get the eyes needed to obtain immortality, and thus continue working on an alternative for the rest of us. With Orochimaru now dead, the plan for a select few individuals being immortal, and ruling over the world as supreme gods has been set back indefinitely, thought Kakashi, as the implication of what Naruto did had sunk in, and you neither hears nor Jiraiya would enjoy hearing this. He killed one of the legendary Sanin. What does that mean for the invasion? I need to inform Kazukage-sama about this thought Baki, as he knew Orochimaru had promised Suna would reach new levels of glory through the invasion. And now the hope of reaching their goal of impressing the wind daimyo, in order to reconsider his weakening of Suna on a financially were destroyed. Well less pain in the ass in our lives if you ask me. Now come on you three. We're all going to celebrate the success of our Genin team. I've got two Genin who made it to the finals, and one at least made it to the preliminaries. Not many can say that for their first Genin team, said Anko with pride in her voice, while making sure her jab at Kakashi was known since only one of his students made it to the Chunin exam finals. Losers. Every single one of them, whispered Sasuke while glaring at the woman and her Genin team. Easy Sasuke. You need this month for the Chunin exam finals. I'll help you deal with Ino since she's your opponent first, and then the real training will start for when you're facing the others, said Kakashi, while Sasuke scoffed. Like that platinum blonde haired whore can defeat me, commented Sasuke with Kakashi nodding. Still, it's better to be properly prepared for fighting a future enemy instead of not being prepared at all. Their brother Itachi thought the same way, when he was growing up and going on missions, replied Kakashi knowing, that the mentioning of the man, that Sasuke hated would drive the Ichiha in front of him to listen. Killing is allowed, right, asked Sasuke with Kakashi. Naturally. It's frowned upon, but it does happen from time to time. Mainly between rival villages, but it does happen on rare occasion between shinobi from the same village, if they are pitted against one another, answered Kakashi with Sasuke smirking. Teach me something lethal. If I can't hurt that loser Namikaze directly, I'm going for the slut he's going to marry, and even if I somehow don't kill the bitch, I'll see to it she's just a ruined waste of space in the end, replied Sasuke with Kakashi eyeing him for a second before nodding. We'll get to that during the later half of the month. For the moment, you need to work on your current level of speed and endurance for what I have to teach. This will ensure your overall victory in the Chunin XM finals, and hurt Naruto where it hurts most when the time comes, explained Kakashi, as he knew what Sasuke wanted, and intended to give it to him when the time came. As to what Sasuke wanted, he wanted a means to kill, or cripple Yamanaka Ino and take away Naruto's future wife from him. And Inichiha always got what Inichiha wanted one way or another. A month had gone by for Naruto sooner than he had expected. So much done each day and not enough time in the day to do the things he really wanted. Training with Karen, preparations for the Chunin XM finals, protecting the women in his life from the greedy councils, and the Ichiha when he learned of Karen's existence. While Sanade had kept them under control with the lack of supporters, they still did a lot of whining, and complaining like spoiled children do until the weak-willed parents cave. Before, the Sandarime Hokage had caved to their whims after a few seconds of bitching about what they needed, and what they wanted. Sanade had no intention of being that way with them. Ever. Flashback, meeting room. I don't care what the Ichiha wants. He's not getting an arranged marriage with Uzumaki Karen. Declared Sanade angrily while the said Ichiha in the room scowled at her. You can't deny me. I'm an Ichiha. 
As this is an important union between our clans, you have no right to refuse. It states as much in Kanoha's village charter. Countered Sasuke with his arrogant smirk appearing on his face. Not only that would be true Chiha. But that is only the case, that both clans wish for this arranged marriage you are proposing to happen. The Uzumaki clan does not wish it. When one clan does not wish it, the Hokage has the power to step in and support the clan refusing the offer, replied Tsunade with Ichiha snarling, since he had missed that part of the charter, when find what he wanted and helped the woman in front of him didn't know about it. Apparently she did. So make them, demanded Sasuke with his already short temper running out. I don't have to make the Uzumaki clan do anything. Least of all have them setting up an arranged marriage for a spoiled little shit like you, exclaimed Sanade angrily with her own short temper having reached its limits with the brat. I'll tell the people. I'll make the village populace protest. You will have no choice but to do what I want, replied Sasuke with Sanade's eyes narrowing. And I'll tell the people how the Uzumaki clan helped build this village beside my own, while yours stayed on the sidelines doing nothing. You think your clan is hot shit it's not. They did nothing while everyone else did everything. You claim the blood in your veins is one of elites, but what you fail to realize is that elites are strong Achiha. You are not. You are weak. Why? Because you don't work for your strength or power. Everyone has handed stuff to you. The stronger in their strength and power. Exclaimed Sanade with Ichiha scowling at her with a snarl on his face. And how do you explain the freak's power? Challenged Sasuke with Sanade standing and her form causing the shadow to loom over the Ichiha. My godson earned that power through pain, suffering, and anguish you could not hope to endure like he has for the majority of your childhood brat. Well you had a home with family, Naruto had nothing. He was lucky to have the clothes he wore every day. You were given love. He was given hate. You were given everything, well this village nearly took everything from him. Do not talk to me about what Naruto has and has not earned you little shit. Sanade practically yelling directly at Sasuke's face with enough force to make the Chiha fall back on his ass. I don't believe this. I was supposed to get the girl I want from the freak's clan, and I would get the secrets of his clan through the marriage. How dare the Uzumaki clan and bitch for Hokage deny me that right, thought Sasuke angrily, while glaring at the woman in front of him. This meeting is over. Everybody get out, exclaimed Sanade, as she had enough of Ichiha for one day, and the same was said about his boot-licking members in this room. And flashback, as it stood, Sasuke had to let the matter go for now, but he vowed to bring it up again at a later time, and hopefully with someone who would let him have what he wanted. Yureya and the Sandarime Hokage seemed to be on board with the idea of Sasuke marrying into the Uzumaki clan, but were upset to hear Tsunade had shot the marriage down. They had planned to talk to the woman, but it was clear the Senju was in no mood to have any kind of conversation with them during the entire month before the Chunin exam finals. Speaking of the Chunin exam finals, the Anbu sent after Kabuto had caught a man successfully shortly after the preliminaries were over. The young medic Nin, who was clearly Jonin level, had given the Anbu quite the hard time, and nearly escaped, if not for the former Yuandayume Hokage entering the fray. Kabuto was clearly curious how the man had come back to life, hearing only rumors and speculations, despite the spy keeping his ear to the ground. Kabuto suspected his sources within Kanoha didn't know or had been told to keep it away from him, to ensure repeated attempts at duplicating the process did not happen, until further study in the matter was done to conduct proper experiments. The medic Nin thought he could defeat the former Yuan Daime, and then studied the former dead man's corpse to figure out the process, in order to bring about a new body, if not breed of soldiers to serve Orchimaru. However, the idea quickly left, and was replaced by rage, when the former Hokage had informed Kabuto of the Sanin's death by Naruto's hands. Needless to say, Kabuto did not take the news well, and tried to kill Minato with his variety of skills. And failed miserably while losing both his arms at the elbow, thanks to the Aran Karsa and Pakto during their fight. After that, the medic Nin was taken to Ibiki for questioning, and to learn more about the invasion, the late Sa Nin had planned for Kanoha. Yureya had tried to pry his way into the meeting, in the attempts of preventing Kabuto from telling his interrogators just who was involved in what, and misdirecting information to keep certain individuals from being mentioned. Unfortunately, for the Sa Nin anyway, the Scarred Leaf Shinobi had orders from Sanade herself to keep Jureya, Kakashi, and even the former Sa Ndayume Hokage himself from interrupting the session. When it was over, Ibiki took all the information he got out of Kabuto directly to Tsunade, who looked it over with sharp eyes, and glanced briefly back at the Jonin. The report had named names, locations where the enemy would strike, what they would use, and the numbers involved in the attack. All in all, it gave Kanoha the advantage in repelling the enemy from their walls. It also named her sensei, Danzo, and Jureya as co-conspirators with Orochimaru when the invasion happened. Not that it mattered with Danzo dead and Orochimaru along with him just recently. However, what concerned her was the plan had a lot of people from the Leaf acting on her sensei's orders to let the fighting get really bad, and Jureya would be responsible for causing a lot of damage during the fighting with the Toads. 
Danzo would make sure the more important areas were secured with Root Shinobi, then the San Daime would fight Orochimaru, literally play the hero, and die as one too, while being taken away in secret, until he could switch into a young healthy body provided by Orochimaru. While everyone was focusing on repairs from the damage, mostly caused by Jurya's toads, the Sanin was meant to use his status as a Sanin to influence Naruto, who was supposed to be weak-minded, and easily manipulated to do anything the man wanted for Jutsus. While Naruto studied under Jiraiya, the man would influence the boy to defend the village from the world's evil, and by evil, Kabuto had been informed by the snake Sanin that it was the other shinobi villages. How they were power-hungry, wanted to take power that didn't belong to them, and use it to conquer everyone else via war. Jiraiya was meant to mold Naruto into a weapon of the leaf by making him believe that every single country aside from fire was not to be trusted. Again, it was the original plan the group had come up with at the time, and a chance to revise it to match the current date had not been discussed. Even after Kabuto learned of Danzo's and the Shinobi Council's death at the time, he reported it to Orochimaru soon following that event, but the Sanin did not care, while saying the plan was still on. This report is disturbing, stated Sanade with a biggie nodding. Which is why that is the only copy, and no one has seen it aside from myself and Anko. I didn't know who the trust even among my own division. Some of the guys I work with have been following the San Daime Hokage for years, and have heard the stories about him growing up. The risk of them leaking this report to him were too high, replied Ibiki with Sanade raising an eyebrow at him. So have you, said Sanade with Ibiki nodding. True, but I know when to serve one Hokage, and when to serve the next. My loyalty isn't to your predecessor, Jiraiya, or his plans for Konoha. They insult the very principles that your grandfather believed in and built into Konoha all those years ago. Not everyone thinks like I do just as I don't think like everyone else does on this matter Hokage-sama, stated Ibiki with Sanade understanding what he was talking about. Unlike some people in his division, Ibiki didn't drink the obeyed the Hokage currently in office without question Kool-Aid, and was smart enough to keep his mind his own in the process without anyone questioning his loyalty to the village. How many route did we round up and begin reprogramming after Danzo died? Asked Sanade with Ibiki frowning. Hard to say. While Danzo was head of the organization, I wouldn't doubt for a second that Hiruzen took control of them. Or that he might have gotten a sizable chunk of them out of the village, until we caught all of the ones we did within Kanoha. Not to mention some of the people Kabuto knows on that list we didn't consider were loyal to Hiruzen or their cause. They need this invasion to happen Sanade. They need the chaos that would come from this to move undetected to kill you and take control of Kanoha. If they do, the Hokage would most likely be Jiraiya, who would put his sensei under an advisory role, and begin their plan to take back control of Konoha. I can only imagine what they would do to the Namikaze and Uzumaki clan should they get the opportunity, answered Ibiki with Sanade frowning since the number of route they had differed from the number they expected. That and Ibiki was right about key people in Konoha just stitching to pull a coup. On her while using this invasion to pull it off. We could warn Suna. Let the Kazukage know he's being played, suggested Sanade with Ibiki shaking his head. I doubt it. The man has been known to be quite stubborn. Not only that, but from what we can gather about his son, Gara is highly unstable, and the Kazukage helped make that happen. If we go to him about this, it might make things worse, and there are still plenty of agents in Konoha who are loyal to the San Daime Hokage. We should focus inward with the time left before the Chunin exam finals, to prepare our defenses in secret, while making sure we can round up the shadowy faction within Konoha, that will move against you Hokage-sama, replied Ibiki with Sanade nodding. Sadly, I have to agree. When the fighting starts, I will try to convince him to change his mind. Hopefully seeing Naruto in action when competing will make him call it off before the attack happens, said Sanade with a biki frowning. With all due respect to Kage-sama, is the boy really that strong? To do what he did so far, I can understand it was impressive, but could he even make a cage, much less to cause Kage call off an invasion? Questioned Ibiki, as he had heard the stories, the rumors, and had felt the power Naruto gave off. But even still, an entire invasion force in a Jinchuriki to boot. That boy has a power exceeding the Kyubi. The same with his parents. It would be considered merciful to have Minato and Kashina do all the fighting. If and when Naruto unleashes his full power, let's just say death is an absolute certainty, replied Sanade with a biggie nodding. I see. In any case, it should be interesting to see how the boy's various opponents fight against him, said Ibiki with Sanade nodding. His first opponent is Hyuga Neji, replied Sanade with a biggie wincing. Ouch. Is it really true that Naruto can break bones, if he chooses to touch and age, when he comes in contact with them? Asked Ibiki with Sanade nodding. Yes. And that is if he lets them land ahead. Neji is fighting an opponent that could hurt him without even trying. Gentle Fist cannot help the Hyuga prodigy in his fight with my godson, stated Sanade with Ibiki now smirking. Poor bastard. I almost feel sorry for him. Almost, remarked Ibiki with Sanade now sporting a smirk of her own. Hyuga Neji holds a grudge against my godson. 
A foolish thing to do, when all Naruto has done, is improve the lives of those around him, remarked Sanade knowing Neji had disliked the idea of Hinata being around Naruto, and the fact her godson's teammate had forfeited instead of fighting. No doubt Neji wanted to hurt young Yakumo, just to get to Naruto. Foolish indeed. Why he actually doesn't tell the kid the truth about that night, is only making things worse, said Ibiki with Sanade frowning. You know what happened? Asked Sanade with Ibiki nodding. One of the few who do. The San Daime made me swear to keep it a secret. He even ordered it. He said Hiyashi would tell Neji the truth when the time was right, but I doubt it. I have met Hiyashi in private about the matter. The look in his eyes, he's not going to tell Neji when the time is right. Not unless someone or something gives him a kick in the ass hard enough to make the first move. Something I think the San Daime knew would happen and exploited, said Ibiki with Sanade frowning. For what purpose? Asked Sanade with Ibiki shrugging. Secret political support. The Hyuga clan has a lot of sway in the realm of politics in and outside of the village. They've been making sure of that for years, in order to keep those outside of the clan from finding a way to gain access to their bloodline. All of the Hyuga elders were very insistent in Hisashi taking Hiyashi's place when the deal was first made to keep the peace with Kumo, said Ibiki with Sanade growling at that, since those old traditionalists never could get their heads out of their ass. All the while, Neji hates his uncle, and despises his cousin in the process, while no one ensures the truth is told to the boy for that very reason, deduced Sanade with Ibiki just nodding. The Hyuga elders never really loved the idea of Hinata being the next clan head of the Hyuga clan. They felt Neji would be their perfect Tulu weapon, to bring her down to the point where even Hiyashi would cave in having her put in the branch family of the clan. After Hanabi was born, I imagine the pressure over the matter increased greatly, and the Hyuga elders kept working the fire that is Neji's hatred, stated Ibiki with Sanade letting out a groan. Let's just hope Naruto doesn't do something that will make him an enemy of the Hyuga clan, said Sanade before looking out the window at the village. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.